The heart pumps blood around the body. It consists of four chambers and several important blood vessels. The first vessel we'll look at is the vena cava. This very large vein carries deoxygenated blood back from the body in one of two branches depending on where the blood's returning from, either the superior branch or the inferior branch. Both these branches join together and the vena cava empties into the right atrium. Notice that the right atrium is on the left side of the diagram. As you're looking at a person's heart from the front, what's actually their right atrium will appear to be on the left, and their left atrium will appear to be on the right. The right atrium is where the pacemaker cells are located, which keep the heart beating in a steady rhythm. If they're not working properly, an artificial pacemaker can be fitted. The pacemaker cells send electrical signals through the muscle in the wall of the right atrium that cause it to contract, which forces blood out into the next chamber, the right ventricle. When the electrical signals reach the right ventricle, its walls contract, forcing the blood out. But there's a valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle, called an atrioventricular valve, that closes to stop the blood being forced back into the atrium. This means there's only one way for the blood to go, and that's out of the pulmonary artery. This is the artery that takes blood to the lungs so that gas exchange can occur. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood, which is unusual for an artery. There are two branches of the pulmonary artery, one for the left lung and one for the right lung. There's also a valve at the start of the pulmonary artery, called a semilunar valve, to prevent blood from passing back into the ventricle. When gas exchange has occurred and the blood has been oxygenated, it returns to the heart via the pulmonary vein. This vein is also unusual as it carries oxygenated blood. There are different branches of the pulmonary vein coming from the left and right lung, but they both empty into the left atrium. Electrical signals make the left atrium contract, forcing blood into the left ventricle. It has very thick muscular walls so that it can contract strongly enough to force blood around the rest of the body. As with the right side of the heart, there's an atrioventricular valve to stop blood shooting back up into the left atrium. The interventricular septum is a barrier that stops deoxygenated blood in the right side of the heart from mixing with oxygenated blood in the left side of the heart. The blood leaves the left ventricle through the aorta. It's an artery with a very thick elastic wall so that it can withstand the high pressure of blood leaving the left ventricle. The aorta branches off into many different arteries, including the coronary arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle. If these arteries get blocked, a heart attack can occur. The human cardiovascular system is referred to as a double circulatory system because blood passes through the heart twice in each cycle. It travels in one loop from the heart to the body and back again, and another from the heart to the lungs and back again. Here are some practice questions for you to try. Pause the video and give them a go. A is the aorta, B is the pulmonary artery, C is the pulmonary vein, D is the left atrium, E is the left ventricle, F is the septum or the interventricular septum, G is the right ventricle, H is the right atrium and I is the vena cava. The function of F, which we now know as the interventricular septum, is to separate the left and right sides of the heart to prevent oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing. The valves between D and E, which are the left atrium and the left ventricle, prevent blood from flowing back from the ventricle into the atrium when the ventricle contracts. Blood returning from the body enters the heart through the vena cava, draining into the right atrium. Blood then drains into the right ventricle, which contracts to force blood out through the pulmonary artery, which leads to the lungs. After gas exchange has occurred in the lungs and the blood has been oxygenated, it flows back to the heart via the pulmonary vein, which empties into the left atrium. This contracts and blood enters the left ventricle, which contracts to force blood out of the aorta, leading to the rest of the body. Thank you for watching, I hope the video was helpful.